Hello, this is Martin Willis, your host, and welcome to the show. We did an earlier show this evening about the whistleblower. You can check that out on our YouTube channel. Tonight, I'm real excited to have Tony Harris on. He's a uh, an Emmy Award-winning journalist. He's got a, a great background, and he's on a wonderful uh, show that I absolutely love called The Proof is Out There. I'm going to play a clip in just a minute on that. And I also want to tell you that our blog this week is by Charles Lear, as usual, and it's about UFO sightings and contact as reported by Dave Davies. Of those of you who like rock and roll, that is uh, Dave Davies of the Kinks, and it's a very interesting article. It talks about the other you know people in rock who have had sightings, so check that out. And um, I am going to play this clip right now, and we'll bring our guest in. Those three really fast flying jets up there. It doesn't look like anything I've ever seen. Whatever it is, is a feet tall. If this video is real, it could turn everything we know on its head. The Proof is out there. New episode, Friday, June 9th at 10, only on the History Channel. Hey, Tony, welcome to the show. It's good to be with you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I, I love this show um, for the fact that you have a verdict on after you look at every case. And I think that is so great. Great. And you're not afraid to say, uh, call something what it is when it is. I mean, something can look so convincing when it comes to some of these clips that you look at. And uh, I just love the premise of it and how it's uh, and how it's operated. And a good friend, Mark D'Antonio, is, is uh, part of that show. And uh, I, I love it. It has been it's been an incredible ride, Martin. I, I will tell you, and and what you pointed to is, you know, certainly one of the conceits of the show that that we are willing to render a verdict on these videos that that we get and what we found on the internet, and you know, we are a, a bit of a crowdsourced show, but yeah, I think our approach and the format has really worked well for us. You never know when you start one of these things how it will work out and whether or not the audience will be receptive to your approach and and what you're doing but the idea to to take a clip um set up the clip and that's part of it right we're doing an extensive setup of the clip we're then saying you know this is how this clip relates historically to other similar events right mm. or other similar sightings and then once we've done that work up front we turn the, the clip in question over to uh, amazing experts and they do the deep analysis on it and after they've done that, you know, we do what no other show seems willing to do at this point. As long as they don't want to do it, that's great. We like being in that territory by ourselves. We uh, we stick our necks out a bit and we render a verdict on it. And and even a thing with our verdicts is if we get to a place where we can't identify something and come to something conclusively, we don't have a quorum to come to a conclusion, a verdict. We will we will say that we'll own up to it. And at the moment we say that we're not really sure you're almost guaranteed that we'll continue to do work on it and continue to try to source it as best as we can and figure out the riddle. So uh, that's that's the show from the first block of the show to the last block of the show. And then, of course, there's the admonition because it's the admonition that keeps the show going. We just encourage people to keep those cameras rolling. And if they find something that, you know, they really can't explain and uh, to send it on into us. And if it passes muster, then, you know, there's a really good chance it'll be on the show. And this, uh, the History Channel, it's your third season. It's airing June 9th um, on the History Channel. And that is, uh, I'm sorry, what is the time that that actually airs? Yeah, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock Eastern time uh, on the History Channel. Yeah, yeah. And we're we're in a great place. We're sandwiched between two great shows. So we've got, you know, uh, as our lead in, at various times in the course of a season, our lead in is either Bill Shatner's show, uh, The Unexplained. Oh, yeah. Or uh, Ancient Aliens. So, yeah. uh, we're in really good company with with both of those shows. And the team over at Ancient Aliens has really kind of adopted us and taken us under their wing. And they promote us all the time, which we're really appreciative of. And it was great to meet George and the rest of the team out at uh, Alien Con over the summer. And so, no, I, was, I guess that was the spring. That was in April. So that was, that was a lot of fun for all of us to be together and to thank them for what they've done and providing, obviously, a great lead in for our show, but also the support. In promoting our program so it, it's been it's been wonderful for us through and through top to bottom now when someone um i actually have a video that someone sent me um that is really really compelling 
And uh, I do get people set that do send me UFO videos all the time. But this one is really something I believe. And I would like, I will, uh, I know that you give out your email address right, right on the show on where to send these. You probably get a million zillion emails and have to filter them all. You know, <laughs> you ready for a real moment? You ready for a real yeah, moment? Yeah, yeah. So I can never remember the, I can never remember the, the, the email address to send it. But, you know, our, our crack our PR team is, is with us and, and on the line. So Olivia, if you wouldn't mind sort of putting it in the chat. <laughs> yeah, there's a chat on the side of StreamYard. Uh, yeah, and I will put that, I can put that definitely in the show notes. So anyone right. that's listening to it um, can check that out. We need but, that. Honestly, we need that. We need for people to to send us their videos. And they've been really kind. We've got a kind of an embarrassment of riches right now. But we, we're always looking for, you know, really quality videos that the team can take apart. <laughs> would you say, is there, is there a any type of percentage that you can quote as unexplained, like you, you don't know at your verdict? I will tell you that it's, it's, it's not very high. It's not a big percentage. Um, and, and that's, uh, again, you know, we, we get hammered by people sometimes because they get upset with us that you know, yeah. they think we're a debunking show, right? Yeah. We're a weeding out show. Right. And, and that's why I like you. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I like the show. Yeah. And those people, there's so many, there's so much good out there, you know, anyway, some really amazing things. Right. And, right. You know, let's, let's deal on the things that are, you know, we can figure out. And I think for, for those who, who take issue with us and think that we're a debunking show, I think by the time we get to a point, a point in our show where we're saying this is real, uh, we built up some, some credibility, right? We've got some credibility in the bank. Yeah. Um, and, and again, if we don't know, we, we say we don't know. I mean, look, we've got physicists on the show. We've got expert video and audio analysts who are working for police departments all over the world. And so I, we, we, you know, you got to have faith in the people that you have on the program. Um, and so I don't think it's that's not a big number of of actual pieces that we get that we can't identify. They're really, really good. I think the challenge now and maybe we're going to get onto this at some point, but I think the challenge now is with with AI and and what oh yeah technology allows people to do in terms of creating deeper deeper and deepest fakes right and so yeah part of our challenge in, is to make sure um, that we see it we identify it we've had the kind of success that we've had has led to people thinking they would love to be able to get one past us right and get it on the show. <laughs> So that they yeah. can then sort of blah, aha, ah, ah, they're not what they claim to be or whatever they would say if they were able to get something past us. And um, so that's the challenge of the show. We welcome it. And, you know, uh, it's another way for us to build credibility with the audience. Do you have people, a lot of people that will write you that are just saying, hey, look, um, I totally disagree with your verdict. And, you know, uh, do they use that email address for that as well? Yeah, well, I'm sure they do, uh, but we get- <laughs> You we don't get, have to read it. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's, it, it'll be there somewhere. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Olivia. It is uh, info at theproofisoutthere.tv. Okay, I'll so put that get, in the chat, yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Martin. So we get a lot of, I'm sure we get a lot of that, people who just disagree. I, you know, I'm at Tweet Tony Harris uh, on Twitter for as long as I'm on that godforsaken site, but- you know, so people will watch the show and engage us immediately when a segment was on before a segment, before we even get to a verdict, people are engaging me up with their thoughts and and sort of trying to guess whether or not I'll, I'll say it's real or fake or whatever else. Right. So that's the gift. Are people, that people making money. Yeah. yeah. Are people <laughs> betting and making money <laughs> like gambling? DraftKings money. Can I get some of that if that's what's happening? Come on. Yeah, that's right. You get a percentage. Right yeah. now, so that's the kind of that's the level of engagement we've come to in the in the three years we've been on the three seasons we've done with of the show, um, and you know I get all kinds of, of text messages and, and and emails and tweets and you know the the one I'm getting a lot lately is uh, hey you're back uh, Sunday at at ten we'll be there hey a question um, has. Uh, <laughs> Has not Mark D'Antonio. Who is it? Who is it? Oh, has Michael Primo shaved off his 80s porn mustache? <laughs> oh, my God. I think I might have made that comment. 
I'll, I'll have to ask my girlfriend. I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> As Michael Primo shaved off his 80s porn mustache for the new episodes. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting all the important the, things. I'm getting the gamut. Okay. That's the, I, only, I only mentioned that to tell you that I'm I'm getting the gamut. <laughs> oh, that is that is hilarious. Hilarious. Um have you have you ever had like a film up and then you had a verdict and then later found out some new information that changed it? I think we're doing that with one of the I think I made a note of it. I think we're doing that with one of the uh, one of the episodes that begins uh, that we're dropping starting this week. I think we've got an update on the Pittsburgh boom, mm. right? Mm. Uh, the Pittsburgh boom from last year. So. Yeah, yeah, there are definitely occasions where we will get some new information, we'll revisit a story. I don't know that we've been, uh, that we've, and I can't remember whether or not we've actually changed a verdict, but we've we've absolutely said on occasion, hey, we got some additional information and maybe we modify it or maybe we just add new additional information. I mean, we've got a story coming up in the season where we've got essentially what looks like the yellow brick road, yellow. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And, and so and so, it, you know, it's, it's certainly not the Elton John song, but it's you know, it is it is the yellow brick road. And, you know, a lot of people will end up thinking and uh, that it's the latest bit of information on the, you know, the Atlantis. Lost City of Atlantis. Right. Yeah. Hmm. So uh, whenever we get an opportunity to get a piece of video that allows us to tell, you know, some of these stories that people have just come to love in the space we take the opportunity to do it and our way of doing it obviously is just to add a bit more color context and new information so you know i think we've got um a, a pretty compelling clip at least the most compelling in a long time of, of what might be under those those waters in loch ness right so mm -hmm. uh we will we will run that and that gives us another uh, kind of another opportunity to revisit the Loch Ness story historically. And, you know, it is the History Channel, so it makes all the sense in the world to approach it that way. And uh, people never seem to get enough of those kinds of stories, the UAP stories, the Bigfoot, the Sasquatch stories. So whenever we get some additional information, it doesn't really matter how big or small, it could be a tiny morsel of information that moves the story forward a little bit. People have sort of demonstrated over the years, particularly in this community, that they love hearing about it. So we'll revisit it. Right. Now, your personal interest in all of these topics. Do you have a personal interest or did you have a personal interest in UFOs? Was it intriguing to you and and all this or is, is this just something you've kind of fallen into? I, look, look, I, I came to it, this whole space and sci-fi and, you know, we're not alone as honestly as a bunch of other people on the planet came to this space watching William Shatner and Star Trek. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no lie. That's it mm -hmm. for me. That's how I came to it. I, I love that show. You know, so the idea for me to be, you know, essentially sharing uh, a channel home and in, in close to the same time slot and on the same night is just a kick and to have him respond when I tweet something out about him or to have him tweet something out about me is just nuts. Mind absolutely poof, gone, blown. So that's how I sort of came to this space. And, and I just um, came to believe that, yeah, it makes sense. Why would we think that we're alone in the universe? And oh, by the way, how many universes are there? And oh, yeah. by the way, how many galaxies are there? And oh, yeah. by the way, how many black holes are there out there? So uh, it makes sense to, to do the exploration. That's how, you know, that was my entree to this space. Now, and, and I never... I never sort of denigrated people and and the way so many people did, you know, who would talk about these things and, and characterize them as, as kooky or, you know, tin foil hat people and that we would shunt off to the garage and feed them their food under the door. I, I, I was never one of those people. It was more, I don't know the answer to this. How do I find an answer to this? So, I mean, I, I guess from I don't know what age, certainly as a teenager, I was interested in the space, but I, I never in a million years thought that I would be hosting a show that is taking a deep dive, look into all of these issues on a, on a weekly basis. That, again, that's another one of those things where my mind is blown that I'm doing this. So, yeah, I've always felt that there's no way we could be alone in the universe. And there was so much more that I didn't know that I wanted to know. And, and I'm sort of curious by nature. And I've always sort of sought out uh, places where 
as I became a journalist and moved into that space, l let me sort of take that journalistic approach to finding out what I what I could about new spaces and are there new areas, new genres where I can explore those genres through journalism and 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 problem solving and asking questions, right? Which is at the heart of what journalists do. And and here I am. I've stumbled into this space and happy to have done it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really fascinating. And you know, I I as as uh you know I, I've had haven't had I'm having trouble with my camera. It's really doing some weird yeah, doing things. things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well if you want um, sure how to, to work how on to that. Change that up. <laughs> but anyway, uh it's I'm turning into a ghost. But I mean I, I had I had what I could only classify as some type of poltergeist experience, you know, 25, 30 years ago. And I would bet my life on that it really did happen. But I would not be able to tell you for sure what it was. Right. You know, I mean, it happened right in front of me. And I've told it on this show actually before. But it was, it has to be explainable in some type of way. I think so. Yeah. But I don't know. How, I mean, it has to have an explanation. But I don't know what that explanation would be. Yeah, you um, I, I, you know, it's I'm I'm happy to hear that you've had some kind of an experience. I, I look forward to the day when I can say to this audience, "Look, I've had an experience, and 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 let me take the next twenty minutes to explain to you what that experience was, and in as vivid a set of details as I can muster with my small little brain." Um, but I haven't had that yet, and. You know, so at, at this point, uh, I still remain a skeptic, right? It, it, it's not, you know, you can be skeptical and still have an open mind. You can be a skeptic and still say, yeah, but I don't think we're here alone, right? And so what it does mean is that I, I just, I need the evidence. Um, I need the proof. We would love at the end of the day, and before this run is over, um, to be able to say we've we've got the most definitive video yet of Bigfoot. We would we would love that. And and that's not to say that if we don't we don't have it by the time that this show's run ends, that Bigfoot doesn't exist. But you know, we we put the whole world on notice that there's a show um ready, willing and able to to take your video of Bigfoot and analyze it. And should that day come when we've got definitive proof, that's a that's a huge day. That's a game changing day. You know, you, you mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, the breaking news uh, from the whistleblower. And, and that's a that's a that's a huge story out there now. There's a lot of work that needs to be done on that reporting, but its potential as a game changer, uh, as potentially a life changer is immense. Right. And yeah, I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up. Um, you know, I had done for the people that are watching the show, listening to it. There is another show on YouTube that I did with Alejandro Rojas about this. And um, the, the thing that Alejandro brings up a lot is he said, we need the receipts. And I understand what he you know means by that. We need some tangible of some type of way to really get this out into the public, to really make the ball rolling. But as we were talking about off air, you know, perhaps this is like a crack in the surface that's going to, you know, perpetuate something and really snowball into something significant. You know, I think it's a very right. possible. Well, I, and the other side for folks who aren't familiar with the story yet, and it's all over the web right now, so you can find it really easily. At the heart of it, it's this idea from this whistleblower who seems to be credentialed up the wazoo a uh, former intelligence officer that, you know, that uh, alien uh, technology, that alien technology uh, is being hidden from Congress and evidence of alien technology is being hidden from Congress. And of course, you know, the Congress represents us to the voice of the people. So that means that information is being withheld from us. Uh, and, and, and to Alejandro's point, yeah, that's, that's the piece, that's the claim that's set all kinds of reporters and sleuths all over the place that set them on fire to try to get to the bottom of that. And yeah, the, now the, the tricky part of corroboration and the receipts, as the kids say, 
uh, to move the story along. But in, in journalism, I think it's important for people to understand is that you, you, you do as much as you can and you run it through as much of an editorial Cuisinart as you can. And then at some point, you, you may not have, have everything buttoned up to the extent that you'd like, hmm. but sometimes you need to go with that story. I mean, uh, we've all seen the story and the accounts of, of the Watergate uh, story that Bernstein and Woodward uh, uh, were so instrumental in, in publishing and bringing forward. You know, they didn't have everything initially. They just didn't. Uh, but they had enough that putting it out there opened kind of the floodgates in a, in a manner of speaking for more information to come forward. And, and maybe that's what's been done here. And and we'll see. I think the next couple of weeks are going to be key. And, you know, if we can get to congressional hearings on this reporting, I, I think that would be a, a huge step forward. Right. Yeah. That whole Watergate thing, the way, you know, that that was, was first approached and everything yeah. that was that's probably the most historic and at least, uh, you know, the 20th century historic uh, journalism and the stories too hard to hold, and 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 maybe yep. the folks that have a debrief, and and I know a couple of them, and you know a couple of the people over there on that. M.J. Benias, who's on our show, is one yep. of the co-founders of it. Tim McMillan, who our aviation expert uh, on the proof, is out there uh, Fridays at ten on the History Channel. How was that? Was that smooth? Was that okay? <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Tim McMillan uh, is our aviation expert. He's on the program as well, and 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 they are the guys who are the co-founders, and one other guy who. For the, right. Micah the Hank. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, um, they've started this ball rolling and let's see where it ends up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm optimistic. I think that it's um, I don't think it, you know, I mean, maybe I disagree a little bit with Alejandro on, on some things when it comes to this. He thinks it should have just been held back until. But, you know, speaking to other people, they're. They just, it was a hot potato. They had to do something with it. And there somehow it leaked out enough where it was all over UFO Twitter. Yeah. And all that. So it had to, they had to do something with it. There's always another until. Yeah. Let's hold this until. Let's hold this yeah. until. And then, you know, you can go down that rabbit hole and not release anything. And then someone could scoop. Someone could yeah. scoop them too. Yeah. And that yeah. would be tragic with but all it's the work. fascinating. Uh, I, I'm in New York now doing some other stuff and. And, and obviously promoting the show because we, we, we love people watching it. We love people interacting with us. But uh, when this thing dropped, when did it drop? Monday, this reporting? I think it dropped on Monday. Uh, we're yes. recording yep. this on Tuesday. So it dropped on Monday. And, and all I know is that, you know, it was crazy. It just, just blew up, right? And I, I knew I needed to. And, and thanks to our team for getting it to me so that I could read in and and at least uh, explain the journalism that that went into releasing something like that and what it would have taken for this team of people that, you know, you and I really like to go ahead with that story. So uh, I, I know it's a big deal. I know there's more to come. I think the the, the piece that I want to see next from them is uh, the follow up piece. You'll remember when uh, what was it? ProPublica released the, the series of pieces on the Supreme Court judges. It wasn't just one. It was it was followed by additional reporting. I'd like to know what the additional reporting is on this. That's what I want to see next. Yes. And for those uh, of you that watch my show Friday, I'm going to be with uh, Ralph Blumenthal, one of the uh, yeah, right. co -author. yeah, he's right. going to be on the show on Friday. We're going to talk about all that. So and that's the way to do it, brother. W well done. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Ralph's a good guy. We've, he's been on a bunch of times. He's a, right. he's uh he's done a lot of good work. And, and, and a fun guy to be with, too. Grab some receipts, will you please? Yeah, exactly. Hey, uh, so I want to talk to you about some of the episodes because I've only watched three and I enjoyed every single one of them a lot. You know, I really I think it's a uh, it's okay. going to be one of my favorite shows of a of a contemporary show. Mm -hmm. um, but what would you consider? some of the really, really interesting videos that have come along and some of the ones that I haven't seen. And you don't have to talk about this season. You can talk about the past seasons. Well, I've always, uh, I, I've, there are a couple of categories that I really enjoy on the show. And I've said this a few times and, you know, no one's really listening to me because we don't get more of these stories on or maybe they're just not available. But, <laughs> but I really, I really enjoy the pieces. Um, where there are spiritual components to them, right? So we'll mm -hmm. we'll get pictures of, 
of shards of glass in people's eye and, and there's a spiritual component to that we'll we'll get pictures of the weeping virgin mary and oh yeah there are mm -hmm. there are a lot of those kinds of stories there's this phenomenon of pareidolia where you'll look at a cloud and see the face yeah. of the gods right right so, um i i really personally in, enjoy those stories because they, it's it's not just what you're seeing it's what you believe right and it's not necessarily what you can prove, but it's what you believe. And so I, I'm always interested in the, the way we think, our, our psychology, the way our psyches work. And so, you know, when I, I'm always thrilled when I see those kinds of stories pop up on our radars, potentially making the show. Um, and to the extent that I can do that, I kind of put my finger on the scale just a little bit, because I think a lot of this is um, what you believe, you know, the, the guys and, and the women who were in the garages with the tinfoil hats on back in the day, because we wouldn't listen to them. We thought they were nuts. They're wagging their fingers at us now. See, told you, told you, right. <laughs> did you, did you, did you, did you see the piece in, in the debrief? Did you see yeah. it? Okay. Right. 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 So I'm, I'm always interested in, in, and that's a part of journalism too. There's a the stuff, you know, in, in your gut and in your core, but you just can't prove for one reason or the other. You just can't get the corroboration on, on, on camera or in print, or you just can't get someone to go on the record with you. I think one of the fascinating pieces about, about this story and this reporting lately is that so many people are willing to go on the record. So I'm always fascinated when I get those, those clips and they make the show where there's not just the clip, but there's also, um, what feels a bit to me like a bit of a spiritual aspect to it, what what we know and what we believe and what becomes an article of faith, right? Mm -hmm. So that's always fascinating to me. Uh, I, I think um, we just have to stay on the UAP story. I think there's there's no way around that. Um, and, you know, we shoot our seasons and, and then news always happens. And, you know, we wish we were on the air on a weekly basis and shooting new episodes every week instead of in the clusters that we do. Uh, because there's always news. We, we're just uh, a little fortunate that each time that we come out with new episodes, uh, there's something in the news on this thing. But 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 the fact is, Martin, you know this as well. Uh, there's news all the time in this space. News all the time in this space. So I think we'll we'll always stay on top and around and abreast and across the the UAP stories. Uh, I'm particularly fascinated by what's in our oceans. Uh, oh yeah. I want more exploration there. And, you know, we've got a Loch Ness story and maybe a couple in this season. Um, I know I'm thinking of one in particular where there's some new video from a couple out on holiday in Scotland. They go to the to the lock and, you know, they capture something that is that has arisen to the to the surface. Right. And th th there's always the unexplained of what's what's under the water there at 750 feet deep. That's right. And murky. And, and murky. Yeah. Right. Hmm. And that's part of the mystery of Loch Ness is the fact that we just can't we don't really know what's there. So, you know, is it some ancestor of some plesiosaur or is it or is it something else or is it just a giant eel or, or is, it, is it just garbage strung together over time? We just right. So part of what keeps it going is, is the mystery aspect of it. So, I mean, I think those those are a couple of spaces and I'm always I'm always thrilled when we get videos in those areas. And again, those are kind of the tent poles of our show. If you're talking about. If, if you've got a show of ours and you're watching and we've got something on Loch Ness, we've got something on a Bigfoot, a Yeti, uh, Sasquatch. Um, if, if you've got something for me that has kind of a spiritual overtone to it, that's a good day at the office for me. <laughs> uh, one of the things I was just trying to pull up an image and I, I know I can do it. It's just going to take some time. But okay. the one thing I was thinking when you were um, I was watching the clip about the Loch Ness Monster, and I said, oh, please don't show the image um, of that everyone knows of the Loch Ness Monster that looks like the dinosaur. And I'm trying to get it into so I can pull it up here. Yeah. Just see if, I, if I got yeah, it. Go ahead and and, and you, did, you did very well by that. And that is that, um, and I'll bring it up here in just a second here. Yeah, it's exactly. that, Yeah, so here it is. And I thought, oh, no. Yeah. This has been proven as a hoax. They're not going to yeah. say this is real. And sure enough, on your show, the person, yeah, yeah this is a hoax. Well, so, so that's that's part of it. I mean, you know, look, we the, we know that people are interested in that story. And so when we get something that hopefully advances the story or, or something that, you know, that, that debunks it a bit or whatever else, you know, that's going to be a, a, a must go for us. We're going to do that story. We're going to update that story. And 
and part of the reason we do that is we know that we know how much interest there is in in that story. So, I mean, look, I'm not I'm not above uh, giving the audience what it wants, right? And, and, you know, they want stories on Loch Ness. They want the, those are the gifts that they keep giving for us. They want stories on Bigfoot. So our approach is going to be to try to set the record as straight as we possibly can based on the, the most recent and current information. But we don't shy away. It's the History Channel, for God's sake. So, yeah, we're going to pull that, vo that photo up. And, yeah, we're going to explain it. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, I think it's it's such a good premise. And, you know, you see so many now, Martin. I'm listening. I just got to fire off a quick text, but I'm listening. Rock yeah. Roll okay. You. Yeah. I get it. You're a busy guy. No, no, no. It's um, fine. But I just want you to know I'm not ignoring. I'm I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I I like the fact that um you know I was thinking that I was going to be watching another I hate to say it uh, but another show where they're rehashing and yes. you know uh and would you do a little bit of that but you, that's not what the show is about. But right. um, so I was really surprised when I saw the experts come in and I want to know who's whose brainchild was this this show? Yeah. So we've got a couple of um, Mike Stiller, um, Stephen Mintz uh, with with History Channel are really uh, the brain children of this program. And they just did a, an amazing job at conceiving of it. I mean, I think they, they took a look at the first of all, they know their audience so well in, at this point. Right. I don't know, 15, mm -hmm. 16 seasons, if not more, of of Ancient Aliens and, I don't know, 12, 13 seasons of The Unexplained and and all the specials that they do, right? So they know this audience really well and, and what it likes. Uh, I think uh, the, the format is the conceit of the show. It's the idea of, okay, we've done those shows and, and we've had really good, long, successful runs with those shows. Is there another slice of this story that we can tell? Is there another entry point? to tell the stories of, of UAPs, UFOs, things that we can't identify, things that can't be explained, right? Things that could be alien, right? So now you've got, you know, the unexplained, you've got ancient aliens. So we're trying to figure out if there is another entry point to, to tell these stories through some that people will be familiar with, but that we can provide new information and take a more critical look at, at that same information, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, they said, look, maybe we take it and, and, and do a journalistic approach to it, right? Uh, but the idea of doing that is, look, the, the videos have to meet a couple of levels before they can get on the show. They have to be something that you capture that seems odd and strange that you can't explain. Great, great, great check. The next thing is, it, it, does this video have some link to history, right? So I mentioned the the, the couple in Scotland, right? Their video links us to Loch Ness and it gives us another opportunity to revisit that show. And we know people love that story. So check, check, check. And then can we move the story along a little bit? Can we take this video apart? And does it help us with our understanding of the Loch Ness monster story? And, and once we get to check, 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 bingo. And if it's, if it, and then the verdict comes um, and, you know, we've, we've, we've rendered a decision on that video. But it's that that middle step. Once we check one, we've got something that's interesting and curious. Check two, it's got a tie to history. And once we've done that setup work, we turn it over to our experts. And we've got, I, look, we've got, you know, D'Antonio, you know, MJ Benias, Amy Patel. Not Patel, her name is Amy Title. Um, we've got Michio Kaku on the program, a, a yep. renowned physicist, right? Uh, Michael Primo is on the program. His dad is on the program as well. Shea Conger and Juan Hernandez, just to name a few. Uh, and I think I mentioned MJ Benias, who's on the show, Tim McMillan, who's on the show. We've just got a, a pretty stellar, you know, cast of, of experts whose job it is to pull those videos apart and tell us what they think it is. We render the verdict. Um, and, and that's it. That's the conceit of the show. And it's just a more critical look at these videos and some of these stories that we've been talking about for decades now. And, and, and thankfully people have said, okay, we don't mind the fact that, you know, some of the things that we had built up in our mind is true that you're taking them apart and you're saying, eh, not what you thought it was. And, and we don't mind that because at some point, I think people have begun to understand that by the time we say something is real, it really means something. Yeah. You know, it is the credibility of our experts. Forget about me. It's the credibility of our experts. So if I get as the mouthpiece to sit on the set and, in my little man cave that we erect every time we shoot the season. <laughs> That's right. 
yes. right? And 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 say, you know, this is this is real. This is or this is fake. We hope that we've built up some credit, and um, you believe in our our credibility in the space and the credibility of the experts. So I think yeah. that's that's the beauty of what these two guys have done in creating the show. And you know, I, I don't know how long these things go. You start one of these projects, and you don't know if it's going to last uh, five minutes or five years. But we'll mm -hmm. be season four pretty soon here and, and we've got a pretty sizable order you know in, in television business terms we've got a pretty sizable order of new shows that we'll be shooting soon and you know knock wood uh and thanks to the audience for following us and and you know we've moved them in some way shape or form that they want to talk about us and watch us um the a couple of times you've had where you you called out that i've watched that is that you've called out and said this is this is our verdict is this is a hoax yeah, and and, I, and two of the times, I personally thought that's got to be a hoax. You know, one of them was the eyes in the cave. I'm not sure if that's what season, so I don't want to mm -hmm. ruin the yeah. maybe so, talking about something coming up, um, and I right. don't want to do that. Um, but there was, I'll just say, there was a couple of hoaxes, and I was lucky enough to uh, actually think that that would be the verdict. You know, um, you know, and and it did come out that way. But my question is when you have called something a hoax when it was a hoax are yes. you getting backlash are you taking a picture of course yeah i'm taking a picture of us yeah yeah um oh absolutely yeah we get yeah. backlash and, and 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 look it's you know some of it gets some of it is really opinionated None of it is worrisome. No one's threatening us. No one, you know, no, no one is. Oh, I should. I'm sorry. Let me be more. Let me be more specific. Yeah. Are you getting backlash from the perpetrator, <laughs> from no, the person who no, gave no. you the film? No. But, but 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 Martin, here's where we are. We're at a place now because of you know the success of the show that people are trying to beat us. They're trying to they're trying to get something <laughs> past us, brother. Yeah. I'm trying to get some masters. They're like, okay, yeah. you, you guys are sitting up there. You, you seem pretty smug in your verdicts and in your analysis, and you think my video. Yeah, yeah. Let me try this. Let me, let me, let me, let me throw a little AI into the mix on you. Let me do this. Yeah. Put this in here and stir it up, and boom, we got on this, Michael Primo. So, no, we've got, we've just gotten to a place that folks are trying to stump us, right? And then they're they're trying to fake us out so they can go on their crazy little Twitter rants. Ah, I got you nanny, nanny, boo, boo. No, 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 no. We're not having that. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we, when there would be the, it, it would be the height of ridiculousness of someone who tried to fake us got ticked off because we caught them. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? That would be something. Yeah. Would, let me tell you something on that day. I'm coming back on your show when we, when we debunked something that was absolutely faked. And, and the person got upset and went on a rant or something. You know, that would be hilarious, right? That you, would be. You yeah. chucklehead. Yeah. There was a, there is a, a great story that happened years ago. Um, I'm saying I'm in the fine arts and antiques business, have been all my life. Awesome. And the Metropolitan Museum had this guy that meticulously faked a early important wing chair and right down to putting, you know, the the linen like would fall out of people's pockets in the corners and everything. And he fooled them, and he did it just to fool them, and exactly. and he fooled the experts. So yeah. I mean, it could it could happen to you know you can't avoid it sometimes. Well, I don't know what you think about the you know this 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 emerging technology. I say emerging because now we're we're really talking about it, and it's advanced to a place where. It's on everyone's mind, but this whole AI space, right? What what's happening with AI? What's the potential right. of AI? And so, you know, uh, I, I I think I'm right in saying we were starting to see a little bit of that in in some previous seasons. Um, I, I think we're definitely on heightened alert now, um, given what's happening in the space. Yeah, those you know, it's like. Uh, you thought you had deep fakes before. Well, we're past deeper fakes now. We're we're going and venturing to this area of the deepest fakes possible mm. using this kind of technology. But I I, I have confidence mm. in our guys that you know they'll be on top of it and across it and, and we'll be able to sort of stay, you know, we'll stay ahead of with it's hard to stay ahead of that thing, but you know, we'll be able to 
ferret out the, the deepest of the fakes. Yeah. Yeah, that is a, a problem and it has been a problem when it comes to, you know, UFO videos. Yeah. For one, you know, but also, you know, in general, the chat PGG, I believe that's something like that. Um, <clears throat> that is that's scary because um, I think people are getting smart enough. I've I heard this story. I don't know if it's true or not, but a professor was saying, oh, yeah, well, I'll let people use chat GPT. Um, for their papers, but all I have to do is put it in chat and then ask them if it came from them, <laughs> you know, type yeah, of thing. It's a way, again, it's a way to ferret it out, right? Yeah. Um, and, and so I, I don't, I don't, are you concerned about it? Let me ask you a question. Are you, how concerned are you? Maybe is the question. I think everybody in some level is concerned, but how, how concerned are you about, you know, the possibility that we evolve this just in, let's say the military space where, you know, you you were feeding information to a, a program and you're saying work up scenarios for attacking X country. And then there's a mistake or something in the program thinks you mean attack such country. How how concerned are you about some of the more potential harmful applications of this technology? Oh, I think it's I think it is a big concern. I mean, you know, yeah. if you really think about there could be a self-replicating um, situation that and someone gone mad, you know, which has happened repeatedly over, you know, there's crazy people that could say, okay, I'm going to destroy the world and it's going to, they're going to replicate and their thing is to destroy the world and, you know, they won't stop, you know, type of thing. You know, I mean, I know that that sounds like really down the rabbit hole, but a situation like that could indeed happen someday the way AI is going, I yeah. do believe. Yeah, and so for our show, you know, it's 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 a challenge, and we recognize it. And uh, I think we're I think we're okay. Certainly, at the moment, we're okay. Uh, we know that people would love to stump us, but uh, I, I I think we're I think we're across it at this point. Yeah, yeah. And have you ever had a situation come in where you're about ready to wrap a season, and then a video comes in, you go, whoa, whoa, we got to this one is really good. We got to do something on it. Yeah, I think I think there have been a couple of I, you know, uh, I, I'm not privy to everything that comes across, but but I'm sure there have been instances where that's happened, and we're getting to a place now. You know, we're not we're not on the air obviously every week, and we're doing seasons, and you know, and 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 dropping new episodes all the time. And I think we we're working ourselves now to a position where we can shorten the distance of time of a turnaround on something that's particularly newsworthy, right? We knew, for example, that the disclosure report was was coming out, what was that, a year or so ago. So I, I did not only uh, one whole hour on it, but I, I actually narrated a, a second hour about the disclosure report for another program uh, on the History Channel. So I think we are, we've gotten to a place now, since we're doing so many episodes now, that we can turn it around a lot more quickly than we could have when we started. Um, so uh, I, I think that we can, we can, for the most part, stay within a reasonable length of time with a news cycle. That's to say where that story is still relevant. All right. Well, um, so we got about 10 minutes left. Yeah. We can do one or two things. You can tell me kind of how the, the chain of, you know, when it comes in and how it all happens, or um, I'll give you the option if you'd like to talk about some of the really interesting, you know, videos that have come in and what you've done to to solve them. Well, I, I think uh, since I, you know, you're, you're a journalist, you, you'd better be uh, preaching transparency and, and openness, right? So the idea of how we get videos to air that I think that's pretty interesting. And I, I'd love for people to have that little bit of insight about how we do what we do. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we, we obviously we started our program, you know, a couple of seasons ago, relying heavily on people's fascination with the Loch Ness monster, Bigfoot, Sasquatch mm -hmm. and the like. And we knew that we needed to evolve past that if we were going to get past one season. Right. <laughs> So uh, there's kind of this admonition at the end of every show to keep those cameras rolling and, and by all means to, to send us those videos to the email address. And it is the info. Oh, dear. Uh, I'll get it up there. I'll put and it up there again. There, yeah. that's, okay, great. 
<laughs> and, and to send us those videos, right? Because we are in essence, and we don't make any bones about it. Uh, it's not a secret. We're a crowdsourced show. So, you know, our, our, our bloodline is our link to the public and their desire to know more about this information and to capture videos that they think are interesting and compelling. So in, in that sense, it's, it's really simple for us. Uh, and so that once people started to really get the hang of that uh, and start to, to send us stuff, we, we kind of quickly moved from a staff of maybe eight people or so to and, and mostly producers and expert animators because sometimes the video needs to be opened up and explained through animation. We're using all of the tools of storytelling in order to sort of bring these stories to life. So we went from a staff of about eight people in, in our first season. I think we're damn near 30 people now on, on the show. And, and that cuts to the point I was making earlier about our ability to sort of take breaking news and developments and, and, and get them to air a lot more quickly than we were in the initial days of the program. Uh, so, uh, we've got a really robust team that, you know, that's, that's doing meetings all the time and, 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 you know, kind of a development process where, where, you know, we go through various stages as to what kind of a clip will make it. We're getting suggestions from everywhere. We're, we're looking online, obviously people are sending us stuff, uh, and the whole team is looking for ideas on stories and, and video. That's really compelling. Uh, our managers, I mentioned Steve Mintz and, and Mike Stiller, they're looking as well if, if something comes across their desks they will send it over so it's really like this team effort of aggregating all of this video and then it's a matter of sorting it out and and finding the most compelling clips the the and, and the most challenging for our team we don't want layups all over the place obviously but we want we want pieces that will challenge the team mm -hmm. uh, and then we sort of that's the way we sort of whittle it down we start out with this this big aggregated bucket and then we you know, we kind of put them in various um, silos and, and sort of work through it and, and, and make our assignments. And then it's a matter of telling the backstory of that clip. Again, first of all, it's got to be compelling. Second of all, it's got to have some sort of history component to it. And and then it's got to be something that's compelling for our analysts to, to, to sort out, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and reach a verdict on. And so, you know, once we get a preliminary that we've got X number of videos, that fall into those categories. Now we're beginning to, yeah, and now we can move. Yeah. Okay, great. Now we've got something that we can craft and shape into a show and, and we're doing that. I don't think the team is getting, but maybe three months off, you know? Really? They, yeah. Wow. I think, I, I think we've gotten to a place now that they're working an awful lot. I mean, it's great for our team. It's, it's, it's a thank you to the people who, who watch us obviously, but I think, you know, there is some, maybe not the full team, but a skeleton team that's always working or, uh, yeah, virtually always working on, on finding materials just to make sure we, we, we don't miss anything that's super compelling. It must be. I can only picture it as it must be a blast. Hmm. What you do and what they do, I mean, I could see that would be a lot of fun doing this. Well, I, it, it's so funny you should say that. Thank you. Thank you. And it absolutely is. I mean, you you see all of this, and I apologize. <laughs> We've been running around all day, so I didn't get a chance to get cleaned up for you. But no, it's it's been one of the thrills of my of my career, and it's totally unexpected. And those are sometimes the, the best surprises, the ones that sure. you don't see coming. Um, you know, I've I've had kind of a long career. It's 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 been successful. Knock wood, it's been successful. I've Worked at some of the biggest uh, houses in in the world, Al Jazeera, CNN, Entertainment Tonight, and you know I'm in the podcasting space now, and I, I've hosted one of the biggest podcasts in in, in true crime. And I heard so, that, yeah, that like number great. three in all podcasts or something. Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. So yeah. we just uh, for those who, who aren't aware, I, I hosted Monster DC Sniper and the Monster franchise is hugely successful and then and and they brought me on board because i was living and working in baltimore at the time uh when malvo and and muhammad went on their shooting and killing spree so uh i again i just was really blessed and really fortunate to to work and report on that podcast and that just took off like a rocket uh this show has been the same way uh i i feel extraordinarily blessed and fortunate to, to at this stage in, in my career you know i'm not a I'm not a young man anymore, Martin, I'm not, you know, to have been able to find this and, and to have people find it and successfully, you know, and enjoy the show. I think that's that's the real point. And, and I always sort of my touchstone for this is, you know, 
there's a guy on our air now who's 92 years old, and that's William wow. Shatner. And, I know and, he is he is the energizer bunny. Martin, at 92 years old, he not only has one show, he has two shows. He's got our show with <laughs> the channel. He's got a show on Fox now. So, you know, he's my touchstone on this. So, you know, as long as people find it interesting and I've still got my wits about me and, and it's such a blast to do, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do it. When William, William Shatner was in his 80s, he went across the country on a motorcycle. I mean, <laughs> the guy's just this is amazing, people. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, so he's my he's my hero. Yeah, yeah, he's something else. Well, this has been a real pleasure. I've really enjoyed it a lot, and uh, you can give this spiel if you'd like. On uh, it's coming out this Friday. Yeah, yeah, 10 yeah. p.m. Friday, nine o'clock. central. Um, yeah, yeah, on ten o'clock Eastern, nine central on the History Channel. Yeah, excellent. Well, it's been a real pleasure. I really thank you a lot. I've really enjoyed it, and uh, I hope the seasons keep coming. And I'm going to get permission. I'm going to ask permission or have the woman who sent me this incredible video. I'd like for yeah. someone to take a look at it. So, well, we've uh, got yeah. And, yeah. And you know someone who knows the team and can put a finger on the scale for you. So go for it. Right. And also, just to let the uh, listener know, the uh, information, The uh, I'm going to put an active email uh, link in the show okay. notes on my website. So, uh, um, so you can just click you. on that and get right to it. So Appreciate thanks you. so much. This was fun. All right. All right. Take care. Take care. All right, everyone. So that is, whoops, I didn't come back the like way I'm supposed to here. How's that working? Here we go. Uh, although my camera's all messed up, I don't know what's going on. I'm all blotchy. I'm not sure what happened. But anyway, thank you so much, everyone. We'll be back uh, next week. And, and we have, um, let's see, next week we have Glenn Richardson. I believe he's from the UK. He will be on the show. Thank you for watching, and remember to keep your eyes to the sky. We'll see you next week.